Hey, I'm Ian Claudius, and I'm the head of book production over at Scribe. Today I'll be teaching you how to format and design your book. I've designed and formatted hundreds of books, and my primary tool for doing that is Adobe InDesign. Adobe InDesign is indeed the standard for book design professionals. Unfortunately, it would take a very long time to teach you even just the basics of how to use the software, so we're not going to be using InDesign. Instead, we'll be working with a far more user-friendly application called Vellum. Vellum isn't free and it's Mac only, but it's the best tool available for do-it-yourselfers. Let's get started. First, you'll want to download and install Vellum. You'll find it at vellum.pub. That's V-E-L-L-U-M dot P-U-B. The program will allow you to set up books and play around without actually buying anything, but to actually generate the print and ebook files, you'll need to purchase a license. We'll come back to that in a second. Now, there are a lot of things that separate a professional publication from an amateur one but I'm just going to show you a few really simple tweaks that make a big difference in the appearance of your text. First, go to System Preferences, select Keyboard, then the Text tab, and make sure Use Smart Quotes and Dashes is checked. And that's it. So let's gather your assets. It's generally a good idea to keep all the assets surrounding your book organized in one place. Here are the ones relevant to this lesson. You have the cover, the publisher logo, if you have one, any images you plan to use in the book, such as a personal headshot, a text file with the book's metadata, and of course your manuscript. Now when we open this document, we'll see that it was saved in an older Word file format. It's in compatibility mode, which you can see in the title bar here. We want to convert the file to the modern format, which plays a bit more nicely with Vellum. You may want to save a separate backup copy first, but when you're ready, select File, Convert Document, click OK, and be sure to save. You can go ahead and close that. All right, let's move on to import and setup. Now that we have everything we need, we're ready to import our manuscript. After opening Vellum, simply click Import Word File, and select your document. We're just gonna go ahead and save this now. Note that you can toggle the navigator and preview panes on or off at any time by clicking the buttons in the top left. And you can adjust the device being previewed by clicking the little screen icon in the preview. We're just going to leave this on with default settings for now. Right off the bat, you may notice the contents on the left looks a little wonky. It does the best it can recognizing the structure of your book, but it may not be perfect. And other aspects of the book may not look the way you want at the moment either, but that's okay. We'll fix all that later. Let's add the metadata and cover to the book first. Go ahead and click on My Book at the top of the sidebar. It may say your book title instead, if that's already been populated, and that's okay. Fill in the relevant metadata in the Title Info tab. We'll just use our note file here. And we can just copy and paste everything. The publisher and the website actually come to the next section. Then swap to the ebook cover tab where you can either click on the plus sign to browse or simply drag your cover image in. Let's go ahead and save. Now just below this, click on title page where we'll enter the publisher data, including a logo if you have one. Also just a little bug of Vellum is sometimes when you add the publisher logo, it'll remove the link you just put in there. So just go ahead and paste that in again. Just a quick note about the current contents page. See this little tablet icon here? That means it's an ebook specific page, not found in the print version. I'm not sure why Vellum set that as the default, but we want a table of contents in all versions. So I'm going to click the gear icon here and select include in all editions. 
there may be pages you want to be either ebook or print specific for whatever reason, but that's not the case with our book today. Let's go ahead and move on. Formatting your book. First, let's look at the structure of your book. We'll go through and make sure that all the chapters and other sections that Vellum didn't auto recognize or something else going on with them, and we'll just make sure they're all labeled correctly. This seemed to pick up our chapters correctly, but it ignored the parts. And it also kind of added chapter subtitles, which should have been headings. And you'll notice kind of a variety of things in, in which it's just trying to recognize data from the Word document and doesn't quite identify it correctly. And so we're just gonna go through and clean instances like those up. This book is subdivided into parts. And you can create a part by highlighting the relevant chapters in the navigator, in this case, one and two, right-clicking and clicking Create Part From Selection. Call this part Preparation. And you'll notice it kind of renumbers the chapters on the left. That's OK. It'll all end up how you want it to be at the end. We're going to do the same with parts two and three. And there you go. You can also delete or merge chapters as needed during your cleanup. Note that each of these pages fall under different categories. Chapters are the most common one, but we also see title page, contents, introduction, etc. And it's useful that these are categorized correctly because then Vellum knows how to style them. If you ever need to change a category, for example, if Vellum thought your introduction was a chapter, we can actually just make that a chapter and see what happens. Convert to chapter. You can just do exactly the same thing in reverse. Whatever section or page is misidentified, you can just click on the gear and convert to what it needs to be, in this case, an introduction. This brings us to a very useful feature of Vellum, and that's adding elements. Now, you can do this one at a time by clicking the gear icon and saying Add Element, and then just choosing the element you need to add. But you can also add multiple elements. What this does is expose several potential pages your book could have, but currently doesn't so you can add them all at once. This serves as a reminder to include a copyright page or about the author. It may also provoke new content that you hadn't considered, such as a dedication or epigraph. Just check everything you'd like to add and click the Add button. Let's check out our new pages. Vellum even populates them with placeholder content, but go ahead and modify or add your own content as needed. Now that all the bones of the book are in order, let's drop down a level and start playing with the text itself. With applying styles, most text functions can be accessed either by this toolbar at the top or by right-clicking. So just use whichever you find more natural. Regarding emphasis, I'm sure you're already familiar with bold, italics, and the like. And Vellum should have imported those styles from Word. You'll also find some less common styles in the pull-down, like small caps and monospace. But while we're here, a brief aside on underlining. This brings us to typography tip number two, do not underline text. It made sense back when bold, italics, small caps, or other forms of emphasis were hard or impossible to use, like on a manual typewriter, but now it just looks amateurish. You can check just about any professionally designed publication if you don't believe me. The exception is hyperlinks, but those are styled automatically. And that's just another reason not to underline text for emphasis. People can mistake it for a link. There are a number of other common ways to enhance the formatting of your book. Let's look at each of them in turn by clicking the asterisk pull down in the top left, or by right clicking and selecting add text feature. First, the subhead. Also simply known as a heading, these help organize and structure your content. You can also at any time click the gear icon and click clear formatting. The ornamental break. This is more common in novels, and it signifies a break in the chapter, but not significant enough to warrant a new chapter. That looks like so. Images I'll come back to a little later. Alignment blocks are if you have content that you'd like to center or otherwise align, like so. 
I think it centers it by default, but you can always click the gear icon to set it to left, right, inset, and other options. A list, just like this one here, after you apply it, you can switch between numbers and bullets by clicking its gear icon like this. A block quotation, like we use with our epigraph, is for setting a quote off for the rest of the text. You can click its gear icon to add an attribution as well. So if we were making this a quote, let's say, we'll add an attribution. There you have it. A web link is pretty much exactly what you think it is. A store link is for adding a specific kind of link, a store link to a retailer like Amazon. Note that you can add affiliate codes in the vellum preferences as well if you like. Now when it comes to adding a photo, if you add images in your Word document, chances are they got imported into vellum. Personally, I like to work with the image files separately and insert them after the fact. The reason is that embedding images in Word can downgrade their quality and we want to avoid that. So let's go to our About the Author page. To insert an image, we can use the asterisk pull down and select image or we can right click add text feature image. And we just navigate to the one we want, in this case me. And now when we click on the image, we get a few options regarding size, placement, etc. The kind of image will make a bit more sense when we go to the book style settings later. So we'll just select whatever sounds most applicable right now. In this case, portrait. Everything else seems fine to me. I'm gonna add a description. And if you like, you can link it. You can also add a caption by selecting the image and clicking its gear icon. I have one last typographic tip. Use only one space after periods, not two, and forget what your English teacher said. Vellum should automatically strip out excess spaces during file generation. If that's the case, why did I bring it up? because it's simply a good habit to get into, and maybe it'll make the world just a little bit more beautiful. Anyway, that wraps up formatting, and now it's time to choose our design. To get started with the design of your book, click on the Styles tab in the Navigator. First, we choose the overall theme. Totally your call, I would go with something you feel is appropriate to your content. Looking through here, it looks like pseudo, for example, sort of leans tech or sci-fi. Something like kindred is a bit more classical. We're gonna start with artisanal and go from there. Now we just go down the line, choosing our heading, which is how our titles look throughout the book. And I'll go ahead and stick with the default for this one. The first paragraph. This is where you can select something like a large drop cap, small caps, or other embellishments for the opening paragraphs. Let's go with small caps. Paragraph after break is similar to the first paragraph styles we just looked at, but applies to paragraphs that are following breaks, like the ornamental breaks we talked about earlier. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep this as normal text without any embellishments. As for the ornamental break, I kind of like this fading line here, so I'm gonna stick with that. Note that you can also even add an image of your own by clicking custom image here and adding your own ornamental break. As for the block quotation, this is for our epigraph and other quotes. I like this faint bordered version here. And for verse, if your book happens to contain verse, you can style that here. I just like this kind of standard italicized version. With photograph, as I brought up earlier in the image settings, you can choose the kind and have the designs you choose here reflect that. I'm not normally big on drop shadows, but I kind of like this one and I'm gonna go ahead and stick to it. Portrait is a similar thing, but with some options more tailored to portraits. In this case, let's go with the circle. 
Caption is pretty self-explanatory. Let's just go with the default italics here. The header and footer, this applies to the print version. It's personal preference, but mine is to go with the book title on the left and the chapter on the right, which is this one where each of them is aligned away from the spine. Another way to go is just straight up minimal with just the page numbers only at the bottom. As for the body, this is more personal preference. I tend to prefer space between paragraphs rather than indentation as it's slightly more modern and easier to read. If you prefer a slightly more traditional appearance or want to shorten your book, feel free to choose indents. As for the font, Heffler text is a very popular book typeface. It's hard to go wrong, but I'm going to mix it up a bit and go with Iowa and old style. In this case, I like to go one or two font sizes above the default with max line spacing. But feel free to tweak each of these to your desired preference. Just don't use Times New Roman. Trust me, it'll look like you printed your book out of Microsoft Word. Just a few more tweaks and we're ready to generate files. Go to File, Print Settings. We want to verify some of these settings. For the trim size, our standard is 5.5 by 8.5. And we recommend this in most circumstances. If your book is exceptionally short or long, you may want to go with something else, but bear in mind your print cover may need to be resized as a result. As for the inside margin, I would go at least 0.75 inches, and personally I prefer one inch for create space. I like to have every chapter begin on the right side. And you want to include images in black and white unless you know for sure your book is going to be in color. Most aren't. Uh, and of course, you can always re-export a color version later if you want. We'll go ahead and click Done. And now we're ready to generate our book files. All right, we're ready to generate our files. Finish lines in sight. Click Generate on the upper right. And we'll click this ellipsis here to select our formats. Today we're going with Kindle, iBooks, and Print, but choose whichever formats are applicable for you. For Print, our recommended trim size is 5.5 by 8.5, but we set that up earlier in the Print settings. Go ahead and click Continue, and then Generate. Let Vellum do its work, and we'll see our book files organized and ready in that folder. So now we have books. Before we celebrate, let's open up the files we generated to give them a quick look. Even though you can preview files in Vellum, it never hurts to give the output a final check. First, let's check out the print version, which is a PDF. Now preview is the default PDF viewer on Mac OS, and it'll work just fine for viewing our PDF. After we open the file, let's go to view, and click two pages. That'll display the output in a spread so it looks more like a book. Flipping through, it looks like everything's okay. Of course, with your book, you can spend more time proofing everything. I just wanna give you a quick overview. Moving on to Apple Books which is formerly known as iBooks, and you might see it represented either way throughout. This is what we'll use to view the EPUB file we created. This is also a default Mac application. Now I like to kind of view one page at a time. And you can check out the table of contents by clicking this button on the top left, make sure everything looks okay. and just kind of go through the book. You can also adjust the settings to see how it might look to other readers. Also, you can adjust the window size to see how it might look on a smaller device. And that's pretty much the idea. Last but not least, we'll use the Kindle Previewer which is a free download from Amazon to view the .mobi file. It can take a minute to load, 
but once it does, you can use it to preview the content on multiple Kindle devices. You have sort of the overhead view for quickly scrolling through the book. And you can also go page by page over here. And you can change the device type to phone or an e-ink reader. And there's quite a few other settings you can play around with, but I'll let you do that. Now, if you generate other file formats, Kobo, for example, you may want to check them with software specific to each one. Vellum's documentation includes all those specifics. There you have it. In some ways, we've just scratched the surface here. And if you want to learn more of the nitty gritty Vellum features, the documentation available on their website is quite clear and comprehensive. And of course, if you'd like to hand all of this work over to someone else, or if you just desire a more polished book, please feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to help.